on CCX News, the surge in teens using e-cigarettes. It's led to a federal government crackdown. Now see how local schools are also stepping in. Plus, responding to Hurricane Florence, the Golden Valley group that's preparing for a trip to the Carolinas. And later, something a Brooklyn Park Gymnastics School owner never expected. I never dreamed that it would be uh, as large as it is today. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. The popularity of e-cigarettes is surging among teenagers. The Minnesota Department of Health says that in the last three years there's been a nearly 50% increase in e-cigarette use among high school students. Now schools are starting to take notice. Delane Cleveland joins us now with more. Delane? Shannon, e-cigarettes are promoted as being a safe alternative to smoking, but the State Health Department and the Food and Drug Administration have raised concerns because the liquid in e-cigarettes contain nicotine and a variety of other chemicals that could lead to addiction or open them up to using other drugs. The state's largest high school is not immune to the uptick in e-cigarette use, so we went there to see the impact. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with peer pressure. You know, they see their peers doing it, and so, you know, if they're doing it, I might as well just try it. And I think one thing that students don't take into accountability is after one puff of an e-cig, it's actually a lot more nicotine than a regular cigarette. So um, chances of you becoming addicted are pretty high. Catherine Bennett is the Dean of Students at Wyzetta High School. She says that students are found vaping on campus on a weekly basis. And it's not a big surprise to her considering that e-cigarettes smell fruity and they're easy for students to conceal. Wyzetta has even launched efforts to educate parents on e-cigarettes so they know what the vape pens and juice bottles look like. But if a Wyzetta student is caught vaping on campus, or if a parent brings concerns to school officials, the student isn't punished. Instead, they work to provide the so student with help. So if the student is, is caught vaping, we bring in their counselor, social worker, our school resource officer, parents, um, and our chemical health specialists to talk about what we can do to support them um, because clearly you know we're more concerned about helping them through whatever it is that they need rather than the disciplinary action so it's more of a restorative piece. The Minnesota Department of Health has a list of resources for parents, schools, and health care providers to educate people on the risks of e-cigarette use. For more information we have a link on our website at ccxmedia.org. Shannon. Thank you, Delane. Brooklyn Park Police responded to a shooting that left a man hospitalized. It happened Sunday evening in the 6300 block of Boone Avenue. When police arrived, they found a man with gunshot wounds. They say the man is expected to survive. As we went to air, police continue to investigate. No arrests have been made. A Golden Valley company is helping residents impacted by Hurricane Florence. And while the storm is downgraded to a tropical depression, Florence is still wreaking havoc in the Carolinas. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us how a local company is trying to help. The winds are dying down, but Florence is still causing major flooding along the Carolina coast. Dams are breaking, bridges are washed out, and some roads are impassable. A lot of the things that we respond to is, is the flood damage, and that's a long-lasting um, impact, so there's a lot of um, homes that need to be gutted out. Golden Valley-based Headwaters Relief Organization is getting ready to send in a team of volunteers to help families pick up the pieces after the storm. Brooms, rakes, water, generators, ladders, and more are ready to be sent down south. We continue working in communities as long as there is a need and it varies from one place to the next. Headwaters is accustomed to assisting folks in need. They were there for Hurricane Harvey in Houston and Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. The group is still lending a hand in those areas. We have a team going this Wednesday to respond with uh, a building trip and some mental health support training. Meanwhile, the relief organization is in a holding pattern until they can round up about 10 to 12 volunteers before they can head to the Carolinas. We are wanting to raise as much support as we can to help those impacted by these recent storms. In Golden Valley, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Headwaters Relief Organization is in need of donations and volunteers. For more information, visit our website, ccxmedia.org.
After months of waiting and more than his fair share of controversy, Robbinsdale will once again have a grocery store starting at 6 a.m. on Tuesday. That is when hy V will open his doors. The store will have all of the grocery store extras like a dry cleaners, floral shop and pharmacy. The store will bring the first Starbucks to Robbinsdale and will also be the first hy V in the Twin Cities to have Mia Pizza, a wood fired made to order pizza shop. It's a restaurant you'd expect to see on the trendy North Loop, not in Golden Valley. But the owners of Brooklyn Park's Lemongrass Restaurant are opening up Lap 14 in the old Perkins Restaurant on Highway 55. It will serve cuisine popular in places around the 14th latitude, Thai, Laotian, and Filipino dishes. The restaurant will open up to the public on Tuesday night. Still ahead on CCX News, how American Ninja Warrior influenced a gymnastics school to move to Brooklyn Park. Plus, it's a big win for the Maple Grove football team as they dominate against top-ranked Minnetonka. More on that later in sports. But first, those hot, humid days may be behind us as we start to feel more like fall. Life has its share of ups and downs, and for the owner of a Brooklyn Park gymnastics school, those ups and downs have made for a remarkable career. Here's reporter Corey Bork with this week's Business Matters. You want to come over for circle time? Inside this large Brooklyn Park warehouse. Come on over! There's a delicate balancing act going on. Who can shake the parachute super fast? Delicate, because kids as young as two... How do you go really fast? ...learn to test out their muscles. Who can show me how they donkey kick with one leg? The balancing part... Two legs! ...comes with practice. Who can bounce around the parachute like a rocket ship? And help, thanks to teachers like Mike Rao. It's been... Hands down, one of the best jobs I've ever had. A job that's so fun, thanks to the kids. Whoa! They brighten your day up without even trying. But also, first of all, because of the uh, owner. When I got into gymnastics, gymnastics schools didn't exist. Larry Gleason started Gleason's Gymnastics School at a small storefront in Minneapolis. The year was 1966, when Lyndon Johnson was president and gymnastics was more popular among boys. Now, unfortunately, uh, very few schools have any kind of boys' gymnastics programs, and there's girls' gymnastics clubs like mine all over the country. For Larry, gymnastics was always his passion. He was a state champion gymnast and became captain of the University of Minnesota gymnastics team. He just never imagined it would turn into this. It was something I enjoyed doing. I thought maybe I might be able to make a living at it somehow, but, but I never dreamed that it would be uh, as large as it is today. And today, Larry oversees 60 employees and 1,000 students at both his Brooklyn Park and Egan locations. And he recently started something new. Once he starts, he's gonna fly. He has a certain show to thank for that. The American Ninja Warrior phenomenon is why Larry moved to the Brooklyn Park location from Maple Grove this summer. Big jump, dude. To have more space nice. for the school's new ninja program. We had an incredible uh, start as far as the numbers of kids, and we expect it's going to grow a lot. And you remember when Larry said he never dreamed of running a facility like this? Well, he never imagined this either. Earlier this month, Larry was inducted into the World Acrobatic Society's Hall of Fame, a remarkable achievement for someone who never imagined it would turn out like this. I just feel very fortunate that I've been able to make a living doing something that I really like to do. For Business Matters, Corey Bork, CCX News. Gleason's Gymnastics School also offers a program for adults. Larry says one of his oldest customers is 95 years old, and Larry has no plans to retire either. He says he wants to keep going as long as, we, as he can, and we hope you do. We're cheering you on. Still ahead, a group of moms in New Hope ditching the stroller in favor of baby wearing. We'll explain what that's all about coming up. But first, Wyzetta delivers an impressive performance on the football field against Edina. Jay Wilcox has the highlights up next. I'm Jay Wilcox with Sports. With the schedule they face, the Maple Grove football team has to be resilient. The Crimson responded well to a loss in Week 2. Youth football night at Maple Grove as the Crimson hosted top-ranked Minnetonka in Week 3. The first offensive series of the game for Maple Grove, Evan Hull scores from three yards out and the Crimson leads 7-0. The senior running back is one of the state's best and he gets through quickly to the secondary on this run and is not going to be caught in the open field. Hall goes 47 yards for a touchdown this time. Maple Grove leads 14-3 early in the second quarter. The Crimson offense is solid in the first half. Hall scores his third touchdown of the half here. Maple Grove stuns the skippers with a 21-3 lead. 
Tonka does get a touchdown before halftime though. Aaron Severson steps up and throws to Tamar Hopkins and it's 21 10 Maple Grove at halftime. The Crimson defense helps put this game away early in the second half. Joe Bulow strips Severson the ball and Archie Zoga picks it up and runs it in for a 17 yard touchdown. Maple Grove leads it 28 10. On the next series for Minnetonka, Severson is back to throw and he's picked off by Zane Mandel. He takes it back 24 yards for a score to make it 35 to 10. Maple Grove goes on to win 35 16 in an impressive performance. Wyzetta had a late lead on Minnetonka in the second week of the season before the Skippers rallied to beat the Trojans. Lambert Brown's team ready to bounce back as they met a dine on the Trojans' home opener. Wyzetta strikes with a big special teams play. Bryce Nault blocks the punt out of the end zone for a safety. It's 2 to nothing Wyzetta after a quarter. In the second quarter, Christian Vasser takes the handoff and bounces it outside. He gets all the way to the three yard line. It's a 27 yard run for Vassar. And it sets up a Bennett Fragamini plunge. Wyzetta takes a nine to nothing lead into halftime against former Osseo coach Darren Lampker, who's now with the Dyna. Third quarter and Keaton Heidi goes play action and hits Ian Hamlin over the middle for a touchdown. Wyzetta's lead grows to 16 to nothing. Their defense is great all night long. Trevor Palish and Cade Sharaka combined to get a key stop on a fourth down play to get the football back for the Trojans. And it sets up a great pass from Heidi to Jacob Wildermuth, who hangs on in traffic. Wyzetta wins this one 23 to nothing. Champlin Park at home to face St. Michael Albertville. Champlin Park makes the first big play on defense. Great interception by Kiernan Lundgren as he steps in front of the receiver for the Rebels. And their offense capitalizes on that turnover. Bennett Otto with a great ball down the sideline to Cato Seeley. And he pulls away from the defenders. This one goes 81 yards for a touchdown. The Rebels miss the PAT though and it's 6 to nothing, Champlin Park. The Knights come right back. A good tough run by Deshaun Phillips as he knocks through a couple of tackle attempts and then gets into the open. He goes 59 yards for the touchdown. And STMA grabs a 7-6 lead after the opening quarter. Second quarter and Knights quarterback Jared Duda fakes a pitch and cuts it up himself. St. Michael Albertville takes the lead at 14-6. Champlin Park comes back though. Otto with a fade pass and watch the one-handed grab by Jace Miller for the touchdown. The Rebels are within one, 14-13 at halftime. But STMA scores a touchdown in the third quarter and Phillips who rushes for 259 yards and three scores puts them in command at 28-13. Champlin Park gets back in it with under five minutes left though as Otto goes to Brock Johnson over the middle and he is not going to be denied on this one. He gets all the way to the sideline and dives for the end zone. It's a touchdown. The Rebels are within eight but an interception seals it for STMA and they win 35-20. There was also plenty of offense when Armstrong and Hopkins hooked up on Friday night. This game on the Royals home field. First quarter in Hopkins, Jaden Washington gets around the edge and gets to the one yard line. It sets up a Royals touchdown. They lead 14 to six. But the Falcons come alive. Jake Breitbach escapes the pressure and throws to Ty Bowman. And he outruns the defense for a 91 yard score. It's a big night in store for Bowman. He catches another TD before halftime and then in the third quarter Breitbach to Nathan Pertilov for a 26 yard touchdown. Falcons go up 27 16. The offenses keep trading points in the fourth quarter. Armstrong's Sean O'Driscoll shimmies his way through the line for an 11 yard score and a 41 31 lead. Armstrong holds on to win 41 37 for their first victory. Cooper, Breck and Providence also won and are all now 3 0 this season. That's all for Sports Shannon. Back to you. All right, thanks, Jay. Pundits say the battleground for control of the Minnesota House will be fought in the suburbs. Today in Local Vote 2018, we shift our focus to a district where both candidates are busy door knocking and campaigning to win votes. House District 44A represents Plymouth. Republican Sarah Anderson is seeking re-election. Her DFL challenger is Jenny Cleborn. I'm State Representative Sarah Anderson. I'm proud to serve Plymouth. As your state representative, I spurred economic growth through the largest bipartisan tax cut in 20 years. Our state is expecting a $900 million surplus, and we are growing high-paying jobs. 
For health care, I authored a 25% reduction in health insurance premiums. I voted to give you the lowest price for prescription drugs. For our kids, I voted to increase school funding by $1.4 billion, providing smaller class sizes, keeping the best teachers, and enhancing student and school safety. I increased investments in early childhood education, lower child care costs, and froze college tuition. Growing jobs, making health care affordable, and putting students first are my priorities. I'm State Representative Sarah Anderson, and I ask for your support. I'm Ginny Cleborn, running for State Representative in Plymouth 44A. Most of us want the same things, affordable health care, safe neighborhoods, good roads, and high quality education. We want a job that allows us to support our families and retire with a dollar in our pocket. I've heard you say you're tired of political arguing and lack of results. As a professional mediator, when others are fighting and arguing, I'm the calm one, focused on results. It's about leadership. Strong, steady leadership. I am a tireless advocate for Plymouth. It's time we have a representative focused on your needs. If you care about your future, our community, vote Ginny Cleborn for state representative. We'll be right back. Have you ever heard of baby wearing? Here's reporter Meredith Hackler to explain. With a library of options, Baby Wearing Twin Cities travels all over the local area to educate parents about the benefits of ditching the stroller or baby carrier and actually wearing your child. It really is something that can make the lives of not only the babies but also their caregivers so much easier. While convenience is one benefit, these moms say it also helps you bond with your baby. You can monitor their breathing more closely, you can monitor their temperature more closely, things like that that you might not be able to do when they're in a stroller or a car seat. Parents like Laura say her doctor suggested baby wearing. My son was born um, very early and it was important that we get a lot of skin to skin time with him. Um, and it was suggested that we look into baby wearing as a way to keep doing that at home. Um, we did and fell in love with it and he basically lived in the carrier from when he came home from the NICU for a few years. But baby wearing can also be used for children in their toddler years. Currently on the market, the uh, baby carrier that goes up to the highest weight range is 70 pounds. Uh, my kindergartner is about 45 pounds, so that kind of gives you an idea that there really isn't an end time. Um, what I say is if it's a child that you would give a piggyback ride to, you can probably wear them in a carrier. The group teaches parents how to wear their child safely. We teach people how to do that safely and comfortably from birth through the end of um, the, the caregiver and child's wearing years. The group's goal is to also eliminate any stigmas. I hope people know that um, baby wearing and baby carriers should be one of those really ubiquitous baby items that every single person has, just like a car seat, just like a stroller. In New Hope, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. See you Tuesday.